Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. We are in the MOOCs course Power Plant System Engineering Module 2 Vapor Power System Part 3. So, in this lecture, our main focus would be to deal with contents of fuels and combustion. So, the word fuels in a steam power systems is derived from the word that is coal or any kind of fuel oil either it can be liquid fuel or it can be also to some extent gaseous fuels, but main constituents is for coal. But to deal with this coal, we need to review some of the thermodynamic aspects and that is derived with certain concept in defining the certain parameters. They, these parameters are heat of combustion then heating value of the fuel, combustion temperatures, then we having defining all these parameters, we will be able to find how this combustion reactions happens for the coal and to some extent we will deal with some of the liquid fuels and biomasses, how they are characterized. But our main focus would be for coal combustion. Before you go to that coal part, let us try to understand or review some of the basic concepts of thermodynamic systems that is closed and open systems. As you see here, the closed systems does not allow the mass and energy interactions to be possible. So, it only allows that a system is having its own boundary and the and whatever energy which is in the systems that is mainly with internal energy. Whereas, in a open systems it allows both mass and energy interactions and for which the system is defined in terms of control volume. Now, in same philosophy if you try to look at a reactor in which this combustion is going to happen. For example, you can view a reactor as a, a container in which there is a entry for carbon and oxygen at certain reference pressure and temperatures, but out, uh, out of this reactor that means once the carbon and oxygen they react each other, it the reactor gives out the product which is carbon dioxide, but at same reference pressure and temperatures. What I am trying to say here, such a systems can be either viewed as a closed systems. Uh, so, when you deal with the reactions that is happening within the reactor, then we can take it as a closed systems, but if you deal with complete uh, systems involving entry of carbon and oxygen and exit of carbon dioxide then you can view it as a open systems. With this philosophy, heat of combustion which is normally represented as a, a energy interaction as heat for a thermodynamic systems is interpreted as heat of combustion. So, here heat release interpreted as a heat of combustion. Now, with this basic philosophy, let us try to define the what do you mean by heat of combustion for open systems. So, if you refer this figure, so basically this carbon and oxygen are treated as reactants and the products that is CO2 they are treated as a the output from this reactor is CO2 which is treated as a products. And through this process if you hypothetically say there is some heat is coming in and, and there is a work transfer, then complete equations can be represented. Uh, that is first law for an uh, open systems we can write is enthalpy of reactants total enthalpy of reactants plus total energy which is entering and enthalpy of products then the work transfer for this reacting systems. Now, if you split this reactants that can be reactants can come up with many number of constituents. So, it is a summation of all the reactants with its corresponding mass and enthalpy and rest of the parameter remains same. Now, this mass can be represented in terms of uh, number of moles and the 
molecular weight of that components. And here the enthalpy is represented as HF and we call this HF as enthalpy of formation. So, this is how uh, we view this enthalpy of formations and later point of time we will see this and how this enthalpy of formation is related to heat of combustion. Now, let us uh, see same concepts like uh, for example, if you say the combustion of ethane and uh, uh, ethane takes 3.5 times O2 to form CO2 and H2, it is a complete combustion for which CO2 and H2 are the final products. Now, if you want to define the concept of formation of uh, enthalpy of heat release during this formation, then let us try to understand how ethane is formed. So, if you take a reference condition of one atmosphere at 20 and 25 degree centigrade, then uh, the chemical formula for ethane is C2H6 and where 2 carbon atoms reacts with 3 uh, molecules of hydrogen to form ethane and during this formation of ethane there is a heat release that is 2817.3 kilojoule per kg. Similarly, enthalpy of formation of CO2 can be, can be interpreted as 8946.8 kilojoule per kg. This is that experimental evidence and when there is a plus sign here and we call this as its exothermic reactions. So, we can say that heat release during this formation is negative quantity which is minus of this and this is how the enthalpy of formation is related to an exothermic reactions. Now, same thing for a closed system if you want to interpret for instance, if you arrest that already reactants are there is no entry for reactants and no entry for products. Uh, and we say that this both reactants and products are within this reactor. So, so you will replace this reacting system as a simple close, uh, closed system reactor and this so that this delta W and delta Q will be 0. Then entire heat release that means both reactor which in uh, which contains already the that is uh, which already contains this fuel plus air. So, when they react each other it produces energy, but that energy is arrested within this reactor itself and that too is interpreted in terms of uh, uh, rising its internal energy and uh, such a uh, thing such uh, since there will be since in this case there is no work output. So, it is a non flow work and such an example it can be interpreted as a like a bomb. So, bomb means already fuel and air is fuel is there and a, when you just ignite this fuel we, it releases the energy. So, it is a explosion of bomb can be treated as a uh, fuel burning in a closed system. So, same philosophy we can also uh, um, analyze uh, how, how much internal energy changes during this process. So, for this closed system uh, energy we can write uh, closed system um, reactor we can write the first law of thermodynamic equations in terms of internal energy which is for reactants and do that is for products and in this process there is delta Q and there is non flow work and since both the terms will not be there by neglecting this this there is no flow work and no uh, sorry this this may be heat release. So, this heat release is interpreted as change in, in increase in the internal energy. So, basically uh, this uh, ur can be replaced as h minus p v and p v p v means it is flow uh, p v means you can interpret as an ideal gas we can write n r 0 times t and for reactants and the from, from the right hand side we can write this as a products. Uh, N stands for number of moles, total number of moles remains same and uh, same, uh, same analysis of uh, open systems can be extended for closed systems by writing this enthalpy as G is equal to U plus P V. So, that U can be uh, represented in terms of H and P V. 
So, this is how the closed system analysis is done to interpret heat of combustion. Now, talking to uh, having said all these things, we are now in a position to define the heating value. Normally, the standard practice is not to define the uh, fuel potential in terms of heat of combustion, rather fuel potential is defined by the uh, unanimous parameter we call this as a heating value. So, normally there are two types of heat heating value that is interpreted, one is higher heating value, other is the lower heating value. Now, the, uh, why there is a difference? Because the difference lies that uh, the heat release uh, of water vapor in the products. So, if you can, uh, if you see our earlier reactions in a complete combustion reactions, always there is a formation of water. Now, uh, if this water vapor enthalpy of this water vapors are taken into account, then we call this as a higher heating value. If it is not taken into account, it is called as lower heating value of the fuel. So, heating value is defined at the heat released for a complete combustion that begins at standard temperatures that is 25 degree and the products of the combustion are cooled to same temperature in a steady adiabatic system without involving work. So, basically we can recall the equations for an open systems and arrest the term like delta w as 0 that means no PDV work and delta q is we call this as a heating value that means heat released during this combustion and that is nothing but the difference between the reactants total enthalpy for um, reactants and products. So, H b heating value of the fuel is negative signs of delta q the, which is delta q is nothing but the negative of heat of combustion. So, that is the reason heating value is the uh, just a, a negative of heat of combustion. So, just to make ensure that heating value is always treated as a positive quantity. So, heat of combustion is mostly negative for an exothermic reactions, but always uh, when you define this heating value, it is just negative of that heat of combustion. So, that it re always remains that means, uh, heating value is always interpreted as a positive quantity. Now, this is also I have explained that heating value for an open system is nothing but the enthalpy of combustion and we have higher heating value, we have lower heating value. Further point I need to mention that uh, the heating value depends on whether the reactant fuels are in the liquid or vapor state and it because uh, it takes certain kind of energy to vaporize the liquid fuel. So, as long as complete combustion occurs, uh, the heating value of the fuel does not change. When you say heating value of open system, it is nothing but heat of combustion. When you say heating value for a closed systems, it is known as internal energy of combustion. That means, it increases the only internal energy. So, with this philosophy, now we are going to with this thermodynamic background. Now, let us see that how you are going to deal with the or how you are going to calculate this heating value. Uh, for coal and this coal is the main source of uh, energy for the steam power systems. Normally for the coal we say heating value as calorific value of the coal either you call this entering value or calorific value of the coal and it is the property of fundamental importance which is defined as the heat transferred when the products of complete combustion of a sample of coal are cooled to initial temperature of air and fuel and to do this we need to do have we need to have a standard test which is done with a bomb calorie meter which is a device that measures the heating value of the coal. Now, here also for the coal uh, two heating values are also cited higher heating value and lower heating value. So, higher heating value assumes that water vapors in the products uh, products condenses and thus it includes the heat of vaporization of waters from water vapors formed by the combustion. Whereas, lower heating value assumes that uh, water vapors formed by the combustion leaves as vapor itself. So, its value is 
further reduced by a quantity which is enthalpy of vaporization. So, there are a lot of researches and lot of analysis was done. Uh, people have tried to uh, find out some experimental evidence using this bomb, uh, bomb calorimeter and side by side there are analytic analysis for the coal for variety types of coals which was done earlier. And one uh, most important formula which is uh, defined which is called at Dulong Petit formula means previous lectures I have also explained similar formula for Dulong's formula where the heating value was expressed in terms of BTU per uh, LBM. But here in SI units, the uh, units, this Dulong's formula was modified with Dulong and Petit formula, and this formula is uh, used to estimate higher heating value of anthracite and bituminous coal. So this formula is mainly used for anthracite and bituminous coal. And but uh, this formula is not generally used for low grade fuels, it is for high grade fuels because its value underestimates. So, for that things uh, the Dulong Petit formula says that in an ultimate analysis when we say that the coal contains uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and sulphur. So, for this for these four items uh, because they only uh, take part as a combustion reactions. This formula states that once you know their mass fractions, then heating value of the fuel can be expressed by these expressions. And this expressions was routinely used and uh, wind and tested using bomb calorimeter for various coal samples. And finally, this was unanimously, this formula was unanimously accepted. So, for a given coal and ultimate analysis, if you know their constituents, then we can find out higher rating value. Once you know this high rating value, we should be able to calculate low rating value of fuel by um, subtracting from um, mass of water uh, vapor multiplied by its enthalpy of vaporization. Now, enthalpy of vaporization for water, if you take into account, uh, so that this becomes HSV minus 2.395 mass into MW. So, basically speaking, if you know the mass of water, then we can uh, uh, vapor, we can calculate the eating value, uh, lower eating value of the fuel. Then let us uh, uh, move on to next uh, parameter which is called as combustion temperatures. So, always we say that when a reaction happens, there is a heat release. Of course, when a heat release is taking place and we are, and, and we are trying to see during a combustion process, what is the upper limit of uh, uh, temperature that can happen during a uh, heat release during, during this kind of heat release processes and uh, mainly for uh, uh, kind of uh, fossil fuel situations. So, to define that we call this as a combustion, we, 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 we just need to define some parameter which is called as combustion temperatures. One frequently used parameters is nothing but the adiabatic combustion or adiabatic flame temperatures. So, what uh, it means that uh, the normally heat of combustion for gases has effects in increasing the enthalpy for an open systems and internal energy for the closed systems. Through this increase in the enthalpy of uh, increase or internal energy increase, uh, the temperature also increases. Uh, now, if you look at the temperatures that released for a flue gases, they are interacted with various heat transfer surfaces of the components like water tubes, superheaters, reheaters of the steam generator unit. So, one way to, to design such kind of components, we just have to have an estimate that what is the upper limit of temperatures that this component uh, has to face and during uh, phase from the flue gases. For this reason, it is very essential that you define this upper limit of temperature and we call this as a adiabatic combustion or adiabatic flame temperature. So, what does this adiabatic flame temperature mean? So, it is 
defined for a combustion medium as it is defined as the maximum temperature that we can obtain uh, obtain either for an open system or closed systems. So, in a sense that adiabatic flame temperature is defined for an open systems and for an close can be defined for an open system as can be closed systems as well. So, in one way we need to define the adiabatic flame temperatures typically on a for a constant volume process and for a, a constant enthalpy process. So, uh, for an open systems uh, if you say maximum temperature we can arrest that means if you say if you recall this the combustion equations for reactants products involving heat transfer and work transfer this is the general equations total enthalpy delta Q total enthalpy of reactants delta Q total enthalpy of products and delta W work transfer. By arresting these two values as 0, we write this equation as this and when this enthalpy of reactants and products they are equal under those circumstances the whatever temperature rise can happen within the reactor we call this as a adiabatic flame temperature or adiabatic combustion temperature at constant pressure. Now, when you interpret same concept for an constant volume systems, we replace these equations in terms of internal energy. So, basically this internal energy is represented as H minus P V. So, for that we write same equations by involving uh, considering P V is equal to R T N R T. So, we write rewrite this equation in this form. So, in this form of equation also there is a non flow of work which is 0 and this is also 0. So, based on this we arrive at this particular expressions uh, which is for which enthalpy of reactants and enthalpy of products match. So, under that situations the maximum temperature that you can achieve is known as adiabatic combustion temperatures. So, if you recall or ref refer this particular figure uh, which is talks about enthalpy and temperatures and for one for reactants other for products. So, basically there is a heat release. So, you have a negative sign here. So, we are looking at the enthalpy value in the negative directions. Now, if you keep on increasing the temperatures the reactants vanishes and it products are formed and one particular point of time the enthalpy of reactants and product matches and that coordinates of that point we call this as adiabatic flame temperatures. So, with this viewpoint, point now let us see that how we can go for the combustion analysis for the coal. So, our uh, main target for the combustion of coal which means it is a high temperature oxidation with fuel elements. Now, if you take coal or any fuel oil which they are which are nothing but the constituents of fossil fuel, they mainly contain on mass basis uh, with components as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, moisture and ash. So, this was explained in our earlier lectures the constituents of coal. Now, if you take their total mass we can say C plus uh, H plus O plus N plus S plus M plus A is equal to 100 percent by mass. But main uh, issue is that uh, out of these elements the combustible elements are only carbon, hydrogen, sulfur. So, they can take part this oxidation process and why we say nitrogen because nitrogen is already there in the air itself. So, if you see this combustible reactions with carbon and oxygen, so carbon plus oxygen gives CO2, hydrogen plus oxygen it gives H2O, sulfur plus oxygen gives SO2 and this is the situation for complete combustions. Now, when there is incomplete combustions, we may not get CO2 rather we can arrive at CO that means 
carbon does not get excess oxygen uh, or it, it could not be oxidized to form CO2 rather it forms CO. So, under such situations it is an incomplete combustion, but our main philosophy is that we must supply sufficient oxygen for complete combustion. To supply and uh, now to get oxygen we have to rely on air because the reaction process normally we do not uh, supply oxygen rather we supply air. So, air requirement is very vital for a steam power systems. So, to burn the fuel completely there are four conditions that should be satisfied. First we should supply enough air for complete combustion and when you say enough air we should make a proper mixing of fuel and air. So, we require enough turbulence and thorough mixing. Then for this air and fuel mixing your furnace temperature should be very high or uh, which should be so which can ignite the fuel and air mixture. So, that means we should maintain very high furnace temperatures. Third thing is that we have to provide a large furnace volume to allow sufficient time for complete combustion. That means uh, we have to allow uh, large area or large volume so that all the fuel components are burnt completely. But virtually the out of although these are hypothetical statements complete mixing of fuel and air is virtually impossible for that reason uh, normally we have to bear with uh, supplying excess air so that necessity of oxygen can be realized during this combustion process. Now, let us try to analyze the oxidation processes of the combustible elements that is carbon, hydrogen and sulphur. So, if you take a complete analysis with all the um, uh, components by mass, so if you add them C plus H plus O plus N plus S plus M plus A is equal to 1. Now, we say that out of these constituents only carbon, hydrogen and sulphur take part in the oxidation process. Already oxygen is there and they to make their oxidation process we have to supply oxygen. So, if you for a complete combustion of carbon with oxygen we require that 12 kg of carbon for 12 kg of carbon the oxygen requirement will be 32 kg because its molecular weight is 32 so that it forms 44 kg of CO2. Similarly, for hydrogen and oxygen combustion we require 4 kg of hydrogen with 32 kg of oxygen to give 36 kg of H2O. So, likewise for sulphur we require uh, equal amount of sulphur and uh, that is 32 kg of sulphur and 32 kg of oxygen it gives SO2 that is sulphur dioxide that is 64 kg. Now, but our main role in this analysis is to find out what is our oxygen requirement. So, for example, if you say C kg of carbon the oxygen requirement will be proportionately that is 32 by 12 which is 2.67 and for H kg of hydrogen oxygen requirement will be 8 H for S kg of sulphur oxygen requirement will be S, uh, S kg. So, the total oxygen requirement for this combustible element would be 2.76 C plus 8 H plus S is this, but already coal contains one unit of oxygen it is minus O. So, our requirement is this minus O already because already some oxygen is present in the coal. So, this is the uh, oxygen requirement, but then we cannot um, get oxygen directly with for, a for a such a large amount. So, we have to rely on the oxygen supply from air, but again air contains 23 percent of oxygen by mass. So, correspondingly for to burn 1 kg of fuel up for complete combustion the total theoretical air requirement would be WO2 divided by 0.232. Then this is the final expressions that is theoretical air requirement for coal. So, if you know carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulphur, 
constituents by mass, total theoretical quantity of uh, air can be calculated. Then, uh, but actual quantity is, uh, is something represented by excess air because it is not always possible for a complete mixing. So, we always have to rely on excess air. So, when the excess air is supplied, the we need to define another parameter which is called as a dilution coefficient which is defined as the, um, ratio of W A by W T. Now, from this also one can calculate what is the excess air percentage of excess air that is W A minus W T by W T. So, this is uh, this analysis will tell you tell us that for a uh, 1 kg of fuel what is the requirement of air. So, this is all about the coal analysis. Now, let us uh, talk something on uh, liquid fuel and this is a very conceptual and we are not going deep into this because liquid fuels utilization is very rare for steam power uh, applications because the we require very large quantity of uh, fuels that is which is to which, which you can get from the coal. Uh, but however, liquid fuels are very much essential for combustion in IC engine, internal combustion engines. Because technically these liquid fuels are excellent source of energy with nearly constant heating values because whereas if you say coal there are variety of heating values depending on the different grades of the coal. But uh, when you say liquid fuels they have a very nearly constant range of heating values. They are easy to handle, store and burn. Many a times we uh, the crude oils is refined, fractionally distilled, cracked into products with various formation like uh, formation of gasoline, aviation fuel, diesel fuels, fuel oil, lubricating oils. All these things are obtained through uh, various chemical processes. The other category of the fuels are also known as synthetic or syn fuels. They are the gaseous and liquid fuels that are produced largely from the coal and various wastes or biomasses. Now, the conversion of coal to these fuels is obtained through gasifications or liquefications. So, gasifications or liquefications are the some of the techniques in which we can convert the coal into liquid fuels. Now, for such fuels we define a parameter which is normally called as flash point which is the lowest temperature that allows inflammable vapors to be formed and it is found by heating the fuel slowly sweeping a flame across the liquid surface and noting the temperature at which distinct flat, uh, flash occurs. So, there are flat point, flash point apparatus which we can uh, which can measure the flash point uh, for a any given fuel. The crude oils have low flash points and uh, they require special handling procedures, but uh, the uh, most suitable crudes for direct burning of the is the direct burning of the sulfur contents. So, now coming back to more details on the liquid fuels, we if you see the crude oil they contains 83 to 87 percent, percent carbon 11 to 14 percent of hydrogens with varying amount of sulfur oxygen nitrogens and other particulate matters and normally these liquid fuels are represented in terms of hydrocarbons with a molecular formula of cmhn so here m stands for number of carbon and n stands for number of hydrogens but they are linking or interlinking is uh, done in variety of ways like like, uh, like paraffins or they can be olefins they can be dilofins they can be cycloparaffins they can also be aromatics which is benzene or naphthalene and of course this value of n depends on the m also so these are the chemical formulas for various hydrocarbon fuels and when you deal with IC engine combustions normally this type of uh, liquid fuels are come into existence. 
and the last component is that uh, deriving the fuel from the biomass. So, biomass we can call it as a renewable source of energy or is a alternative energy resources which we can obtain from plants. So, they are organic matters which is derived from the plants or which are grown in the um, land or they can be get we can get it through aquatics, they can be forest corps, residues and they are specially and they can be animal manure. So, they are treated in a specific way so that the fuel can be used for variety of applications. Hence, they are treated as a renewable source of energy at par with solar energy and it can uh, because the solar energy is also utilized to grow the plants for, for this high energy contents through photosynthesis. Now, this biomass can be converted to liquid or gaseous fuels and thereby increasing its energy density and making it possible for transportation of uh, long distances. There are possible ways of biomass conversions. One is biogas conversion route, other is thermochemical conversions and third is biochemical conversions. So, in a bioconversions, it is a direct combustion or thermochemical combustion or biogas conversion as uh, two routes. One is thermochemical conversions, which is which you call as a gasification or liquefications. Other route is anaerobic digestions and fermentations. So, for which we can create biogas plants and to produce methane and carbon dioxide with minimal impurities. So, this is uh, uh, grossly I, uh, I have discussed about the liquid fuels, their uh, utilities, their applications. So, this is all about uh, the combustion fuels and combustions and where we our main focus would be solid fuels which is coal. Now, with this uh, we are now in a position to solve some numerical problems uh, based on the coal combustion. So, the first problem is based on a coal analysis and in our previous lectures we defined one of the auxiliary components of steam power systems that is fans. So, there are two types of fan, one is forced draft fan, other is induced draft fans. So, the main distinction of these two fans is that forced draft fans normally handles only air because it supplies air requirement for the combustions and induced draft fans is used to keep take the combustion products out of the plant. So, they are they mainly deal with uh, the uh, air requirement or air which is already present in the systems or various components at the same time it has to also take out the products of combustions. So, our main focus in the first problem is that we need to uh, find out uh, for a steam uh, power systems we need to find out what is the motor capacity for a force draft fan which operates at 30 degree centigrade with following data. So, basically coal is coming from one end which is a fuel and the for the coal the mass percentage are carbon 78 percent, hydrogen 3 percent, sulfur 1 percent, oxygen 3 percent, nitrogen 1.1 percent, water 3.3 percent and coal feed rate is 10 tons per hour. And we require air from the atmosphere which needs to be sucked into to the systems uh, with excess air requirement of 30 percent and this is should be used to burn the coal. Uh, we also uh, uh, to calculate the fan power we also require the uh, plenum chamber pressure which is already mentioned at 1.8 kilo Newton per me, uh, meter square and mechanical efficiency as 65 percent. So, please recall our earlier lectures on fans where uh, we have written the expressions for power requirement of 
of a four strapped fan that is w dot f for four strapped fan is equal to m dot into b a r because it handles a r into delta p divided by efficiency of the fan. Now, out of this the expressions we have data like delta p is already 1.8 kilo Newton per meter square eta f is equal to 0 0.65. Now, we need to calculate what is specific volume of air. So, specific volume of air we can write it get it from ideal gas equations that is R t by p. So, you know R is equal to 287 and t is 30 degree centigrade that is 303 Kelvin. So, you can write 303 divided by p is uh, p is atmospheric because uh, 101325 Newton per meter square because we are taking atmospheric air into account 101325. So, this will give you specific volume for air is equal to 0 0.858 meter cube per kg. So, this is all the parameters are known, but we do not know what is m dot. So, m dot is mass of air requirement. So, mass of the air requirement we need to find step wise first thing we need to find out what is the theoretical air requirement for a coal combustion. So, you recall our expression that is uh, w dot t is equal to 11.5 c plus 34.5 into h minus o by 8 plus 4.5 3s. Now, out of this we have already known this data that is given C as 0 0.78, H as 0 0.03, uh, S as O as uh, 0 0.03 also then S as sulphur as 0 0.01. So, putting this number we can write w dot t is equal to 9.907 kg air per kg fuel. So, this is the stoichiometric requirement, but we are supplying excess air. So, total requirement of excess air will be 30 percent higher than this. So, we can say with excess air 30 percent excess air. So, this w dot t would be 9.907 into 1.3. So, w dot t would be 12.9 kg air per kg fuel. Now, what is the fuel? Fuel flow rate, fuel uh, supply is uh, uh, fuel supply or coal feed rate. Coal feed rate is 10 tons or 10,000 kg per hour. So, for th by putting this, this will imply what is mass of air requirement would be w dot t into 10000 divided by 3600. So, this would be m dot air becomes uh, 35 point because you know this w dot t. So, this will be 35.83 kg per second. So, we have this m dot air requirement, then 
uh, then we can calculate w dot uh, f that is power requirement for force that fan would be 35.83 into 0 0.858 into delta p that is 1800 Newton per meter square divided by 0 0.65. So, the power requirement for uh, the force trap fan would be 85132 watt or approximately 85.132 kilowatt. Okay. So, this is how we, we calculate the power requirement for force trap fan. In the same problems, we have just twisted that if for the same unit or same coal feed rate, if we need to use a induced draft fan that operates with a pressure differential of 2.5 kilo Newton per meter square, and but gas temperature is 180 degree centigrade, fan efficiency is 55 percent, then what could be the uh, motor capacity? So, in our previous analysis, we get m dot air requirement as 35.83 uh, kg per second and we also see that m dot gas. m dot gas is the because the, the uh, induced draft fan uses the combustion products, these combustion products are obtained from the rate at which the coal is feed, coal is feed at the rate 10,000 kg per hour. So, from this we can calculate 10,000 divided by 3600. At this rate the combustion product or gaseous product or flue gas are generated. So, this gas means here it is flue gas. So, it is 2.78 kg per seconds. So, the total mass is uh, we can calculate the sum of uh, so m dot is is m dot air plus m dot gas okay now we also need to calculate the specific volume so specific volume of air we already know as 0 0.858 meter cube per kg and so we can write v air is equal to R T A R by P. Also for flue gases, we say V F G is equal to R T flue gas by P. So, pressure because flue gas assuming that flue gas is released to atmosphere. So, this pressure can be taken as equal. So, uh, uh, T F G is given as uh, Tfg is already given as 180 degree centigrade. So, we can find a relations like Vfg is equal to uh, 180 plus 273 plus 273 uh, divided by 30 plus 273 into V A R that is 0 0.858. So, flue gas specific volume will be 1.28 meter cube per kg. So, uh, we are now in a position to obtain what is the power requirement for induced draft fan. So, W dot F for induced draft fan would be M dot A R plus m dot gas into specific volume of the flue gas into delta p divided by efficiency of induced draft fan. So, here data is given efficiency of is 55 percent and delta p is 2500 Newton per meter squares. So, by inserting the value we can obtain W dot F D 
W dot that is power requirement for induced draft fan is equal to 22460 watt or sorry this number would be 224640 watt or approximately 224.64 uh, kilowatt. So, this is the first part. Second part is just to extend that how you can use Dulong Pitot formula to calculate the heating value of the fuel. So, we recall Dulong and Pitt formula. So, already we have percentage of by mass per carbon hydrogen and oxygen is given. So, you can recall this HHB as 33.83 C plus 144.45 H minus O by 8 plus 9.32 S. So, from question 1 we get the data as C is equal to 0 0.78, H is equal to 0 0.03, O is equal to 0 0.03, S is equal to 0 0.01. So, inserting this number, we can find HSV as uh, 30.2. 27 because this unit is in mega joule per kg. This value would be 30.27 mega joule per kg. So, this is about uh, uh, linking this uh, fan problem as well as the coal analysis. So, this is a good problem where it links where uh, the different components of a steam power systems. Now, we will revisit another problem which was discussed in our previous lectures which is called as fluidized bed combustion. So, fluidized based combustion means a in a combustion unit which is a fluidized bed. So, your initial state is that the coal particles create a uh, initial state the coal particles form a bed which is in the collapse state. Now, when the fluid is uh, or, or air is inserted into the bed, it tries to spread. So, it becomes a becomes fluidized. So, it, now it becomes fluidized inside this chamber. So, for this uh, fluidized conditions, our main requirement is that what is the uh, minimum fluidization velocity? When it means to make this condensed state or collapsed state fluidized particle, uh, co collapsed state coal particles to become fluidized particles, uh, fluidized state, what is the minimum velocity requirement. So, here basically there are three densities, one is density of bed that is uh, rho b which is 1620 kg per meter cube, other is density of solid that is uh, coal that is 2780 kg per meter cube and third is air density of air that which is we all know 1.2 kg per meter cube. In addition to that we have viscosity of air which is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 kg by meter into second and also the diameter of this uh, fluid particles dp is 420 micron. So, with this data we are going to calculate what is the void S and minimum fluidization velocity. So, first expression we recall as void S which is alpha is 1 minus rho b by rho s. So, it is 1 minus 1620 divided by 
2780. So, voidage is a straightforward answer, we get the voidage at 0 0.417. Now, to go for the next uh, study that is fluidization velocity, we have to recall Reynolds number and this Reynolds number has a uh, empirical relations with a number which is called as Archimedes number. If you recall our previous um, lectures, the expression was written as for Reynolds number as C 1 square plus C 2 into A r, A r stands for Archimedes number to the power combined to the power 0 0.5 minus C 1. So, data for C 1 is taken as 27.2 and C 2 is equal to 0 0.5. 048. Now, this Archimedes number A r is defined as rho a into rho s minus rho a g d p q divided by mu g square. So, all the num data are given here and when we insert these numbers we arrive at A r is equal to 7480. So, all this data is given rho b, rho s, g, g is, g is 9.81 meters per second square, d p is 420 micron. So, putting this num uh, mu g mu a r that is gas that is given as 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5. So, putting this number we get Archimedes number as this. Then we can rewrite this Reynolds number as uh, rho v d that is u m minimum fluidization velocity rho a r because fluidization happens for a r that is d p divided by mu a that is equal to uh, uh, C 1 square 27.2 plus C 2 0 0.048 into 7480 all to the power 0 0.5 minus 27.2. So, uh, from this we can take mu uh, um as uh, um as uh, so this value becomes uh, 5.95 so we say 5.95 into mu air that is 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 5 divided by rho a r that is 1.2 into 420 into 10 to the power minus 6. So, answer lies as minimum fluidization velocity is 0 0.2 meter per second. So, it means that we must supply the uh, we must we must insert a velocity to this a r at a rate which is velocity of air should be 0.2 meter per second to bring this collapsed state of particles into fluidized state. So, this is all about this lecture today. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.